All right, let's just get this set. Mel on the road, in the RV, in the motorhome, having a blast. Come on in, let's have a chat about this today. Because I know a lot of you wonder what on earth happens to narcissists as they get older. All right, and I'll wait for you, some people to come in and say hi, where you're from. Okay, I'm in a little town in New South Wales at the moment, just on the way out to the coast, which is going to be amazing. Say hello. Let's get the check, chat going and see if you're there. Let me know if you can hear and see me, okay? Okay, beautiful. Hello, Roller Curl. Hey, how you going? Oh, Tiggy. Tiggy Bud. I love that name. As you know, my Tiggy boy, if you were following me for five years, you would have known all about Tiggy TV and my gorgeous little Tiggy guy. Hi, Texas Patty. How are you going? Well, you know, I'm just on the way out to the coast and this is the great thing about being in a motorhome. I can kind of just pull over, get a beautiful chai latte, and just have a chat with you beautiful thrivers my favorite people so today in this little one i want to have a chat about what happens to narcissists as they age because this is another one of those big million dollar questions so often hey belinda because so often we see narcissists it looks like they get all their goodies and they're just waltzing off into the uh, sunset and you know that their life is untouchable and nothing goes wrong and they get everything they want and uh, it's not true it's not true I want to give you some solace today I want to give you some facts about the real deal Wow my father is facing jail currently and admits no wrongdoing you know and this is a really valid point Tiggy but it really really is because we're gonna go through in this little time together in our life we're gonna have a look at why things get worse for narcissists as they age what is that about okay hey Belinda oh I'm so pleased you're here it's beautiful it's really really beautiful and there's a few things about it it's kind of micro and it's macro as well as what's going on at the moment you know with human consciousness which uh, I'm going to touch on it today for those of you who enjoy the spiritual Kind of like quantum aspect i think that's very important to start getting your head around but also to just on the micro personal level why do things get worse for narcissists as they age all right guys now i just want to remind you that if you are new to my channel and my stuff please subscribe because that means you're going to get every new video and live notification that i'm doing because i really want to help support you every step of the way and also too if you like my videos hit the like button and get them out there and share them with other people because the thriver mission is all about people understanding that you can heal for real from narcissistic abuse and not just merely survive but you can thrive diane thank you for passing on my name to people who i can help it's very important to me beautiful and this is it. We don't want to keep living in a world of victimization where people are just stuck in their trauma and their wounds and never getting better. We want to up level beyond narcissistic abuse so that we can kick it to the curb and leave them behind in the dust. And we have to if we're going to have a great life. Okay, so older narcissists, what happens to narcissists as they age? Well, first of all, they start losing energy the energy to mine narcissistic supply and what is narcissistic supply it's attention acclaim sex property resources money contacts notoriety superiority all of those things and here's the here's the deal with the narcissist they know they know and at least an unconscious level but they're driven by it they know that they need to keep feeding themselves they're like the proverbial black hole out in space that's sucking up celestial bodies 
to exist, but it still stays a black hole, which means enough is never enough. But it's it's the need for constant feeding of energy and stuff. Because the narcissist terror is to just be, this is important, this bit, the narcissist terror is to be alone with themselves. Think black hole and always getting stuff to try and stop it being black and sucking you inside it like a vacuum. So when narcissists get older and they start lacking the energy and the charm and the looks and the ability to scheme and manipulate. To scheme and manipulate takes up quite a lot of brain cells. You've got to be able to plot and think about how to go about it. it takes energy. So the older a narcissist gets, the harder it gets to charm people and win people and plot. So they end up getting very, very anxious, angry, nasty. And what I've seen personally with older narcissists is when they start getting sick and breaking down as a disordered false self, they're often not healthy and they often make a lot of decisions and choices for their life that are not necessarily healthy. Even if you do get a narcissist who's into health food and all that kind of stuff, which they can be, especially your more somatic body image narcissist, they're feeding themselves so much toxicity all the time. They're not healthy. They don't have open glowing cells filled with source inside of them. They're really unhealthy people. Even if they're eating healthy, they're not healthy. And as Anne Hart is saying, alcoholic, a lot of them self-medicate with other things apart from narcissistic supply. Things like alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, unprotected sex. A lot of narcissists really are not fussy about their self-medication choices and the things that they do to their bodies. But as they get older, what happens is that black hole that is that self that they've spent a lifetime of avoiding with narcissistic supply by getting stuff and things outside of themselves to keep themselves away from themselves and to keep feeding the insatiable false self in a master where enough is never enough and they keep feeding it, feeding it, feeding it and they try to keep up on a level of a narcissistic high which is, I'm amazing, people think I'm incredible, people fear me, they adore me, they revere me, I'm superior to other people, all of that kind of stuff. All that attention, 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 attention. And we all know that narcissists get narcissistic injury and that's when they're down and dirty and nasty, when they haven't been able to regulate their narcissistic supply enough. Have you experienced that? When the narcissist is as high as a kite, and they can actually be really delightful. Like they're loving and they're caring and they're happy and they're funny and they're really sociable. But then it's like on a, on a dime, they can flip into being horrible. Horrible. And you may think to yourself, this person's bipolar. Like how can they be as high as a kite? And then it's like this black ink of nastiness that just came out of nowhere that reason is because they were full of narcissistic supply and it's not like a true inner soul source peace wholeness which is beautiful and lasting it's kind of like a sugar high and it'll pop or it you know it fizzles out and when it fizzles out they hit a rock bottom. It's like coming off a drug because literally that's what it is. It's like the downer from a drug. 
But you see, what happens with an older narcissist is they can't get the drug. They can't get a steady supply of the drug. So they hit a massive downer that just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And they might get a little bit of relief where they can get a bit of narcissistic supply, but they're crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing and crashing down. The older narcissists get, the nastier they get. They don't have the energy and the resources to cloak themselves in nicety and charm. And also what is really happening with many, 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 many narcissists is, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this, that they can end up with Parkinson's disease or something very similar. Now, I'm not saying everybody with Parkinson's is a narcissist. I'm not saying that at all. But it's really interesting when you have a look at the metaph metaphysical reason for Parkinson's, it often is loss of control. So really what's happening here is, really what's happening here is, this person was able to control their environment or they thought they were, they actually weren't. They were just kicking the can down the road, really. So a narcissist's whole life revolves around controlling their environment. And what does controlling their environment mean? Being able to siphon enough narcissistic supply to be able to maintain the false self and not fall into a complete and utter self-annihilation of a narcissistic injury that they can't get themselves out of. So that's their whole life. So it doesn't matter how much you think the narcissist has run off with the gorgeous model, driving the sports car, taking all your money, having a wow of a time, going overseas, all of those things are only tools to try to keep the narcissist from self-annihilating. And it's very, very interesting because there are a ton of narcissists that end up with, you know, multi-millions or whatever, and they're still on their deathbed in dementia wards with Parkinson. I'm going to tell you the truth strapped down to stop them assaulting nurses and saying the most disgusting things because people aren't listening to the charm anymore. They're not falling for the narcissistic mirage. They're not able to woo and whine and dine and mesmerize and suck people in pretend that they're the best people out. They don't have the energy. Melissa Hoffman, you're right. And these people end up being, rather than the classic, charming, powerful manipulator, they end up being terminal perpetual victims. And really, it's no different. It's just the mask has dropped. They were always blaming everybody and everything else for their life. They'd ne never actually taken the responsibility to say, I'm the generative source of my own experience and therefore I need to heal it. I love what you just said, Rock. I think everybody's part narc. I just did a little thing on that. It's coming out soon. I really want you to uh, see it and tune into that. It's on my Facebook book, uh, group because I, I did a live about it on Facebook. Go to my Facebook page and look it up. I want you to watch it. It's going to really help you realize what's going on here. Okay, the difference between people who are narcissists and not narcissists. So for all of us, our goal in life 100% is to one day be on our deathbed and to reflect and say, who was I in my life? It's not going to have anything to do with whether you got with the hottest partners or you drove the best sports cars or you had the biggest condos. It's not going to have anything to do with any of that. On your deathbed, you're going to say, who was I? 
Did I contribute? Did I make a difference? Did I love? Was I loved? Did I care? Was I cared for? That's actually what? That's a life well lived. Do you think that's right? And I think a life well lived is also going to be, did I make peace? Was I at peace with me? Was I connected to my higher power? Did I have a relationship with source? Did I have my source self, my source soul connection? Did I heal that? Did I love and accept myself? Was I able to love and accept others? And you know what? More than what I was doing, who was I being? And I think if we do that, we could be on our deathbed and we're saying, you know what? I went for it. I really went for this lifetime to heal my relationship with myself and life and others. The narcissist is never, ever going to do that. Ever. Yeah, my narc father pa passed away with Parkinson's. Just as I was saying, I can't tell you how many people I know with narcissists who have ended up passing away with Parkinson's and they were a nightmare in the end. I can't tell you how many people I know with narcissistic, let's say mums, who might have married six different men and ripped off all of their estates and had multiple affairs and was the life of the party. And, you know, it looked like she had everything and then on her deathbed nobody wants to visit her. She's cranky, nasty, horrific, acting like a total spoiled child, having a shocking time, lost her looks, lost her money. I can't tell you, with Parkinson's or worse, I can't, cancer, eating her alive. I really kind of do believe how we live is maybe, not in all cases, but it's possibly a good indication of how we're going to die. And the older narcissistic males that have been playboys and you might, they might have procured younger women. 30, 40 years younger than them, they had all the money, all the toys, they had all the things. And so interesting. A few of these I've known that some younger women have completely ripped them off, taken all of their taken all of their money and all of their stuff. But really that's just uh, that's not even what's important, but it's funny. It's kind of ironic. But what's happened is they're left. These people are left by people. Because they don't want to be around people who are just horrific and horrible and disgusting. People don't want to be around older narcissists because they are just revolting. And I know personally an older narcissist who was in hospital and not well and I was kind of amazed that a nurse didn't put a pillow over his head. No. And this was a friend of mine, so I'm like, how did the nurses cop that? It's unbelievable. They're probably used to it. They probably see it all the time. Yeah. Clubbing got old for me in my 20s. <laughs> Look, I was probably in my 40s, but I'm definitely beyond it now. That's awesome. And look, there really are. There are some narcissists that are still pulling it off in their older age. They are. They're still, they're still able to do it. It's like, did you ever see the movie, The Picture of Dorian Gray? What an incredible movie. Do you remember that? It was this picture of this beautiful person. And as, you know, and the picture was, and they had this eternal youth and then, it was quite incredible. And then one day the picture showed the true self. It was a great story. I really recommend if you haven't seen the movie, The Picture of Dorian Gray, watch it because it is the 
utter truth about narcissism and where they end up. The utter truth. I really want you to have heart and I've got coming out, I've got coming out a um, an article on Monday on my blog uh, which is going to give you some more details about all of this. It's about the narcissist's karma and our dharma and it explains some of this about it. It's going to take it to an even deeper spiritual level for you. But the spiritual part I wanted to touch on is that we are going through this huge human collective awakening and raising consciousness and some call it from going from 3D to 5D. But what I really believe it means, and I'm seeing it everywhere, is that if people are living in an illusionary false self, all of their wounds are coming up to be healed. It's like you can't escape yourself anymore. You can't self-medicate and keep kicking yourself down the road, refusing to accept and heal your inner demons and free yourself to the light. And I am seeing so many narcissistic people really popping at the moment, regardless of their age. But that's exactly what's happening when narcissists get older. They can't self-avoid. They can't self-medicate as much. They're stuck with themselves. It's like a vampire in the sun. And for all of us in our evolution graduation and us raising our own levels of consciousness is about us facing our shadow parts and releasing them and reprogramming them with higher self super consciousness source creation god life force the universe whatever you want to call that force of love and truth and power that can heal what we can't heal and when you connect to quantum truths on that level then you expand beyond that emptiness and trying to get stuff outside of yourself narcissists will never do that inner journey back home that's why they're out on the edge losing power losing charm losing ability to get their false sources to fill them up you can't get filled up by a false source as george caitlin said it's like trying to put be hungry and to tape sandwiches on your body it's not going to fill you up that's what narcissists have been doing their whole life and codependents do it too but we can come home and sort that out so anyway has anybody got any last couple of minutes? Have you got a question that you would like answered before I go and get back on the road? My partner's outside. He's looking in the window going, you finished? <laughs> Maybe they'll spontaneously combust, Lisa. I wouldn't put it... I, look, nothing would surprise me anymore about what can happen with people. Uh, professionals at addiction treatment detox a way of underlying narcissism in patients. Do they see what I see? My narcissist 66 to and in and out of rehab okay i'm just going to be straight with you uh and great question do professionals see the narcissism i am not a fan of traditional contemporary psychology or uh or rehab okay i know it can be very very helpful i'm definitely much more interested in the quantum reprogramming of the subconscious for true healing I'm not into trying to manage symptoms. I'm into healing the root cause of what created those symptoms or those addictions. And I was able to heal my own addictions in that way quantumly really powerfully. So that's a whole other discussion and we're going to have, I'm going to do a live about that soon. I love that topic. It's powerful. Bottom line, my answer, no. A lot of people, we hear it all the time and I saw it too in my journey. Uh, there are a lot of therapists and a lot of professionals that have got no idea what's going on with narciss narciss narcissists and narcissistic abuse. And they don't have solutions for it. That's my humble, or maybe not so humble, opinion. Okay, does anybody else have a question that I'm going to sign off? All right, we look like... Oh, there we go. We nearly lost that. Okay, thank you, everybody. And look, if I've missed stuff, um, hang out to our next live. Or I just want to really remind all of you, anybody who's new to my channel, 
not only sign up for my YouTube channel because you're going to get all the notifications, I really so much want you to check out my 16 day free course, which is melanietoniaevans.com forward slash free course. You get supportive, powerful emails every day that are going to take you on a deep journey of rather than looking out there at everything they've done, coming inside to take your soul, your clarity, your sanity and your life back in direct, powerful, straight lines that work. So melanietoniaevans.com forward slash free course. There's no obligation. We don't keep any of your details for any other purpose and it's going to help you so much. So please check that out. And those of you who've heard about NARP, the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Program, I can't recommend it enough to heal for real. To heal for real. None of this mere survival, none of this still having post-traumatic stress disorder, agoraphobia, fibromyalgia, adrenal malfunction, depression, anxiety, financial distress and distraction, love distress and distraction, none of living like that. This is about moving forward into true thriving. Okay, so check out NARP if you're ready. All right, love you all so much and I hope, you know, let's not envy narcissists. Let's not feel sorry for them either. It's their journey. We've got our own but don't ever believe that they're running off with the goodies and having an amazing existence. It's just not true. All right, everybody, I love you so much. And um, I'll be doing some more lives and little videos on location soon. I'm living the best life at the moment. It's so much fun. All right, I appreciate you all so much as well. Lots of love. Bye-bye.